Soccer Cup Event 2021 in Forge of Empires. Since 2014, there is a Soccer Cup event in Forge of Empires. This year, it starts on June 3rd. Those who played the event last year will already be familiar with it. For 21 days, the goal is once again to collect energy drinks, tickets and player cards. The event starts with an initial stock of 150 energy drinks. Every day, for the first login, you get another 80 energy drinks. So, as always, it's worth logging in every day. This can then be increased by the incidents in and around the city. These provide some additional energy drinks every now and then, or occasionally tickets or player cards. Then there are 34 instant quests plus 21 daily quests in the familiar way. For each completed quest you get 100 energy drinks. The quests follow the well-known framework with no special surprises. These average 2 to 3 quests per day are absolutely doable in the given time. If you plan your quests ahead, you should pay special attention to the long production tasks. As usual, the task can be found in the first pinned comment below the video. In addition to the energy drinks, the quests also alternately deliver a ticket to participate in the tournament or three player cards. The second milestone after completing the 22nd quest delivers the expansion module for the event hub, as already explained in the journal. For the completion of the 35th quest, this is the first daily quest, there is then the surprise box for the summer event. Finally, another 1100 energy drinks are then offered for completing the 43rd quest. The energy drinks are then used in training games for moves on the grass. In each case, you pass the ball to one of the three possible players and receive an instant reward in return. This can be doubled in rare cases. This happens more often with better players. With more playing cards, the players of the team become better and better, indicated by the number in the star. This player strength is important in tournament games, so it has no influence on the course of training games. Each player has a different selection of possible wins, one of which is chosen randomly. With a certain probability, this can be the daily special, which can be won several times. I relied entirely on the FOE helper suggestion. It always shows which player has the best chance to win the daily special. If you don't have the FOE helper, use the player order shown below. To the left is a player with the highest chance. To the right the chance of winning the daily prize decreases more and more. So always choose a player who is as far to the left as possible in this list. The FOE helper does not do anything else. The player with the highest chance to win the daily special is always the player who pushes the ball most efficiently. It is the player who manages the most yards per energy drink. I have faded in the list of the daily specials of the beta server. Usually this list only changes in the order. Thus, the list is a good orientation for what daily prizes to expect and approximately when they might be offered. I strongly recommend not to wait too long for the best daily special, but to make training games every now and then at acceptable daily specials. Because in these training games you get rewards that are of great importance in the tournaments of this event. Player cards and tickets. For example, you can use the daily specials to add additional segments to an existing hippodrome or upgrade tactician towers. This event is less well suited to earning previous year main prizes completely as you should make your training games early. Even 
If it is only a training game, you still want to get the ball into the opponent's goal. For that, you then get the awarded grand prize. I've also put in the order of the grand prizes here. Every other grand prize provides an upgrade kit for the Athlon Abbey. Player cards obtained from quest rewards and events are supplemented with more cards through training games. Through these, the team improves more and more and becomes more competitive in the tournament games as a result. Once you have a ticket for the tournament, you can play a tournament game. In this tournament game, the goal is to win more prizes and to be at the top of the leaderboard, thus earning additional individual rewards and league prizes. Important, you should play your tournament games every day. because only those who have less than three tournament tickets will get new tickets regularly. One ticket every eight hours. This is comparable to the hourly regenerating forge points, which stops as you reach a stock of 10. Do not get confused. There are different daily specials for training games and tournament games. I have also included this list. Even if you should have certain preferences in this list, do not hoard the tournament tickets, but use them promptly regardless of the daily specials offered for the tournament games, so that new tickets keep regenerating. Of course, it is of special advantage to get 50 random player tickets as a reward. On three days, there will be this chance. On the beta server, the first day already was one of them. Whoever is able to improve his team then pulls away from all the others. You will always be offered three other teams as possible opponents. The lowest opponent is always extremely easy to defeat. The chance to win against this opponent is the highest and every victory brings another prize. Most of the time, the chance to win here is about 75%. The middle opponent has about the same playing strength as your own team and accordingly, you can count on a 50% chance of winning. These prizes are better. The top opponent always comes from the top teams and the probability of winning is correspondingly worse. If you don't have an absolute top team, you will have to recon with a win probability of about 30%. For this, there are then again somewhat better rewards. In most cases, players with only a mediocre team are recommended to look for opponents of medium strength. Occasionally, however, you may have good chances of winning against a better team. Then you should strike. Before a match, you set up the appropriate team. The computer simply suggests the strongest players, regardless of their specialization. However, these players do not necessarily have to be combined to form the strongest team. The whole thing is based on a rock-paper-scissor concept. A defender, here blue, is strong against an attacker, here red, but weak against a midfielder, here green. An attacker, on the other hand, is strong against midfielders. By setting up the appropriate team, you can improve your chances of winning. It doesn't matter if a player is exactly aligned with his opponent. Only the fact of being in the team counts for the probability of winning. Just experiment with different teams. The probability of victory is displayed in each case. Only this counts in the end. Once you have the desired team lined up, the actual game runs, as usual in Corona times, completely without spectators. We only get to know the result. 
If the result is not the desired victory, you can repeat the game as many times as you have tickets. Even against the weakest opponent, victory is not guaranteed. Conversely, even against the most overpowering opponent, you have at least a small chance of winning. Just as a lower league club in a cup tournament can sometimes win against the reigning champion. For each victory, there is a reward from the list of possible rewards. Since there are much better rewards against difficult opponents, I can only encourage to use chances against the best opponent. Also, you get league points for every victory. Without using diamonds, it is realistic to be at least in the amateur league at the end. At the end of the event, there is a missing last selection kit for the Athlon Abbey. The way to league success is therefore this. Play the tournament games every day so that tickets continue to be regenerated. If you have a chance of winning against the strongest team of more than 35% after optimizing the team, take the associated risk of being defeated and challenge them. Otherwise, choose the middle opponent and go for fights against the worst opponent only if the other teams don't want to match at all. After getting a lot of kits from training games, quest series milestones and tournament success rewards, we naturally want to build the Athlon Abbey. The Abbey can be upgraded to level 10 and then provides 25 goods from the building's age, 10 forge points and impressive bonuses on attack and defense of your city defense, in addition to population, happiness, coins, supplies and medals. With the PvP tournament freshly started, these bonuses are known to become much more important. You get the Athlon Abbey as a level 1 building for reaching the first milestone in the quest series. Two more milestones then provide two upgrade kits. Every second goal in training games then provides another upgrade kit. It is realistic to get another 5 upgrade kits this way. With an upgrade kit from the Archaeology Event Surprise Box and the League Reward, you then have the top prize at level 10. So, this year's soccer event will once again deliver a flood of small and medium prizes plus a unique event building. Good luck!